ट्वेंटी हैज ज्वाइन गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग प्रोफेसर जी सर हेलो या गुड गुड इवनिंग सर मेरे या कैसे हो सर हाउ आर यू या आई एम फाइन थैंक यू हाउ इज द कंडीशन ऑफ या वी आर फाइन वी आर कंटाइन ओनली एंड टेकिंग ऑनलाइन क्लासेस फ्रॉम आवर होम व्हाट अबाउट केरला व्हाट इज द सिचुएशन इन केरला या सेम सिचुएशन हियर आल्सो के and we'll just start okay. off with the webinar and uh, people because, are uh, joining sir yeah yeah because in the last in the previous mail it is mentioned that the seminar webinar will start at 6:30 uh, actually at 6 everything is scheduled at 6 yeah maybe the mail, the mail from sparsh jindal okay. today I uh, the the text it is mentioned that 30th August 6:30 p.m. Probably it is a mistake, right? Yeah, Maybe yeah. It is, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So no problem. But Sparsh, people, please take care of this thing. These things, these things are very important timings. Please take yeah, care yeah. in the film. Yeah. So uh, we can just wait for some time, and uh, I'll just like to introduce with some of the people. Here. So uh, I'd like to introduce Ravi sir. That is, he is our faculty coordinator uh, in okay. IIIS IES and Joint Sciences chapter. Okay. And I would also like to introduce Professor Rajiv Mittal sir, who is HOD of Electrical Engineering, Electrical, Electrical Engineering Department. Uh, yeah. Sir. So we are here together with Great. Okay. So. I request now Sneha to put. We can just start off with the webinar. Okay. So shall we start now? Greeting. Greeting and namaste After to one and all. Some instructions for today's webinar: The Art of Writing Research Paper by Professor Jason Matthew. Kindly pin IAS IEEE mate as he will be presenting. Everyone, please turn off your camera and mic. In case of any query, I request you to comment the say in the chat box. Now, without any further delay, I request IEEE IAS Mate Branch Counselor Dr. Neelu Nagpal to welcome our guest speaker, Professor Jason Matthew. Ma'am, please. Yeah. Thank you, Daksh. Warm greetings to all the participants and faculty members. and cordial salutation to our guest speaker professor jason matthew i would like to begin by thanking each one of you to take time out for this session and being here with us at this moment today we all have gathered here to know about the insights and the efforts required to write a research paper if research is a journey you can refer a research paper as one of the destination which is reserved uniquely for every researcher by this de destination researcher can claim his research by publishing it in a good conference or journal i remember i took two days to write two lines of my first research paper but all the participants are lucky today to have professor jason matthew among us who will guide how to mark the destination of research in a tactful and technical manner that is he will mentor us to learn this art of crafting research on a paper one day i heard him in a webinar how to organize a good conference i decided to invite him and utilize his expertise for our students also sir thanks a lot for accepting the invitation 
this information certainly benefited all of us from his depth of knowledge and depth of and breadth of expertise so without any delay let us start off with the great word of sharon bagley somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known now i call upon i triple e i a s mate student member sneha to please introduce our prestigious guest professor jason matthew over to sneha good evening sir i would like to introduce our guest professor jason matthew associate professor electrical department government engineering college thrissur kerala he received his bachelor of technology degree in electrical and electronics engineering from rajiv gandhi institute of technology kottayam kerala and mtech degree in 2001 from college of engineering trivandrum kerala and phd degree in power electronics from the indian institute of science bangalore in 2014 he has an experience of more than 15 years of teaching r&d and consultancy experience in the area of power electronics he has authored several ieee transaction papers and is a senior member of ieee his current research interests include power electronics multi level inverters power quality and motor drives he is currently serving as a conference ieee chair kerala section now without any further ado i would like to invite matthew sir to share his words of wisdom with us and i'm sure his words will provide each one of us a better understanding about the concept of research papers please thank you uh, sneha and thank you professor neeru for your kind words so uh, so let me present my no? is my screen visible yes so it's completely visible okay 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 so at the outset let me thank professor neelu and uh, iwi is chapter of uh, mait new delhi for giving me an opportunity to interact with you uh, regarding the art of writing technical paper so i consider this session as a, uh, uh, rather my own experience or rather than a comprehensive tutorial on writing research paper okay so uh, without any further delay let us go to the content so these are the contents of the presentation so we'll be discussing on uh they planning the research phase the preparation of papers important considerations different sections in a paper the common mistakes made by authors and uh, we will look at the paper from the viewpoint of reviewers also then we will go through a few sample papers then we will discuss about publication ethics then we will try to identify suitable place places for publication of paper then we will discuss something about journal publication and uh, dealing with uh, reviewer comments and uh, rejection so this is the outline of the seminar okay so publish or perish this is the very popular quote be here frequently it means uh, if we are not publishing papers regularly we are out of the field especially in academy but we are we have to think where we have to publish paper or how we can write paper how how we can write quality paper and publish it in quality places so that is the 
content of today's uh, seminar. Uh, and uh, we have to, first of all, think what is the motivation for research? So, so unless we are passionate about our research, we are, it will be very difficult for us to move forward. Okay, so there should be some motivation for research, whether if you are a UG student, there should be some motivation, right? So what should be our motivation in doing a B.Tech project, for example? So most of the B.Tech projects, they do a project and uh, it's over. So our aim should be to uh, convert the project work to quality publications. So written material should be there. So that even after several years, we have a published uh, matter with in, uh, in our name. So that is a record for it's an achievement. So there should be a motivation for research and we should be passionate about the research. Then only we can move forward. And uh, the paper writing is both an art as well as a science. So it means uh, in paper writing, uh, we already have some scientific knowledge, right? Because of the research, we have some scientific knowledge. And uh, that scientific knowledge we are presenting as a paper. It is an art. There is, so the paper writing is both an art and a science. So there are certain uh, scientific methods involved in the paper writing as well as the aesthetics. That is also important. So we will discuss about that also. Then finally, uh, rather than publishing a lot of paper, our aim is to have quality publication. And uh, the paper should be, uh, and our aim should be to become a reliable and effective researcher. That should be our aim. Okay, so after Suppose someone is uh, doing a research and publishing uh, the work in some uh, journal or conference, and if they if there are mistakes, factual errors are there. Then after several years, when we look at those, uh, look at that paper, we will be embarrassed. So uh, it will affect our integrity. So we our aim is should be to be become a reliable and effective researcher. Okay. Now the question is, is there any shortcut to become a good author? So the answer is, yes, there is a shortcut. That is to become a good reader and read quality papers. If you want, if you want to become good author, we have to read quality papers. And we will see what are the qualities needed to become a good author. Then only we can become a sorry, quality is needed to be a good reader. Then only we can become a good author. So we will go through uh, that first, then we will go to the rest of the portion. So the traits of good readers. First one is, they review the paper. Read, visualize, predict and interrogate. interrogate. So what is the meaning of previewing the paper? The previewing the paper means if we get a paper, we have to decide whether we want to read the paper or not. So, uh, we cannot all the time read all the paper and all those papers and uh, come out whether uh, the paper is good or not. So by simply looking at the abstract, the conclusion and the result, we should be able to weigh the paper, whether it is worthy of reading. Otherwise, we will lose our time. That is the first thing. We have to preview the paper. So uh, then we have to read the paper. If the paper is uh, worthy of reading, we have to read the paper. Then we have to visualize the content. What is happening? What is written there? We have to visualize. Then that is imagination. So as Einstein said, imagination is more important than, than knowledge. We have to uh, develop our imagina imagination capabilities. Okay. Then we should be able to predict what is going to happen. Okay. So after so reading some papers, you'll be in a position such that if you go through a paper, uh, you, it 
to your pop up to your mind what is going to happen most of the time it will it will be correct only so that is a prediction and inter- interrogate interrogate means you have to ask yourself certain questions like what why where such questions should be asked that is meant by interrogation then we have to critically analyze the content of the paper then we have to make connections between text between paragraphs we have to we should be able to uh, make connections then we have to make connections between paper to paper we must have seen must have uh, read several uh, simple papers we have to make connections between those different papers then we have to comprehend the idea then we have to investigate further on the paper and we have to come up with our own inferences so this part is called the review stage you have to review the paper in a critical manner okay then we have to think about other alternatives to solve the problem there can be maybe hundreds of methods to solve the solve the same problem we have to think about other alternatives to solve, solve the uh, same problem then that will give us more ideas so we can, we can develop the problem in a different manner and we have can come up with a, our own paper okay so in fact i had a student she told me that she read more than 50 papers and uh, she could not come up with any idea so that is the problem with the uh, uh, that is the pro- problem with her reading so she is not uh, she has not read properly that is the problem okay then we have to make a summary of key idea of the paper in our own words along with the paper details that is we have to think about the paper we have to understand the key idea of the paper then we have to write down that idea in our own words in a diary with the paper details so that will help us in uh, can help us later then we have to suppose we get some new idea whether it is a feeble idea still we have some idea we have to note down those ideas then we have to think is there any research gap is there any possibility to possibility of further work on that paper we have to scribble down those uh those uh, points okay that is very important so based on this uh, uh, our uh, summary of the key idea uh, we can develop we can we will be in a position to uh, write more number of papers that will help us in future so these are the main qualities of uh, good readers then the next thing is planning the research okay so i know that we have a mixed group of uh, people attending the seminar uh, webinar uh, there may be btech students there may be research scholars there may be mtech students therefore uh, especially btech students they will be dealing with the projects project work mtech students there will be dealing with project Uh, one year duration projects whereas phd students they will be carrying their work for maybe 3 year or 4 year so they have to be clear about their uh, research they have to plan the work properly so if it is a btech project they have to plan the project properly so that at the end they can they come up with a hardware project as well as a paper likewise in a if it is a research scholar paper writing is mandatory so they have to publish paper in reputed journals but if uh, they are not going in a proper planned manner they will end up in trouble okay so we have to identify this is not the focus of our webinar but we have to go through this also uh, briefly so we have to identify the Uh, essential tools needed and we have to understand the limitation of our lab okay 
So, uh, there are different phases involved in, in a project. For example, how we get project. Sometimes the project, uh, it may be an industrial project and uh, the processor may be involved with that project work. So, so you will also be put into that work. Still, you have to think about that project and you have to go through related uh, papers and uh, you should try to come up with some ideas. Whereas in PhD works and all, the most of the work will be done by the uh, students. The guide will be supporting the students. Whereas in some ca other cases, the guide will be prompting the students to uh, probe further and uh, the probe will be working uh, with the student to develop ideas and uh, he, will be, or he or she will be helping the student as well. That shouldn't be quite fortunate, we have to say. So, uh, if a student has an opportunity to select GATE, I should say that uh, the GATE, uh, the student should uh, select, uh, one of the priorities should be the GATE, other than the area of the project work. The gate, should, the gate is the most important factor in any research work or project work. Okay. So we have to, then we have to understand pertinent limitations. Limitation means, uh, for example, in power electronics, uh, we had a problem. One student uh, came up with an idea to develop a 500 kilohertz switching frequency converter. But we, our lab didn't have that capability. We didn't have... Uh, DSO, digital storage cops of that capability. So we had to reduce the switching frequency. Such type of limitations will always be there. So we have to understand the limitation of our lab. Uh, and another problem for, uh, is a few students came up with another problem. That is, uh, they want to, to uh, have a wireless power transmission. So they started with uh, uh, thinking they could transmit power wirelessly, wirelessly over a distance of one meter. Then finally, they could not even complete their project. So there should, there will be a lot of limitations. We have to properly understand the limitations. Then we have to select proper work, area of the work. And another thing is the modeling. We have to model the uh, project work or research work properly. And as, our assumptions should be proper, otherwise you will be in, end up in trouble. Then validation of the result will be there. The validation can be done through simulation. Uh, the simulation is to be matched with the hardware result in most cases, especially in power electronics. You have to, there should be both simulation as well as hardware. Then we have to check whether simulation tools are sufficient for the work. Sometimes the simulation tool may not be enough. In that case, we have to go for uh, maybe purchase. We have to initiate purchase. So the gate can help you in that regard. Then finally, the publication of papers. Then thesis and project writing is involved. So we have to plan the project work properly. OK. Next, we will come to the core of the, our presentation, that is the preparation of papers. So, regarding preparation of the papers, a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson is very rele relevant. Let the reader find that he cannot afford to omit any line of your writing because you have omitted every word that he can spare. So, I repeat. Let the reader find that he cannot afford to omit any line of your writing because you have omitted every word that he can spare. I hope you understand, uh, understood. Okay. So the meaning is our paper should be clear, concise, and precise. That is the most important thing. 
so we uh, usually in journals in itp transactions normally eight pages are uh, free of cost if we exceed eight pages then we have to pay maybe 200 dollar per page or so so it means every page is precious we cannot uh, uh, write unnecessary matter there so we have to be very uh, clear about the content we have to be, we have to condense the paper and we have to write accordingly so the written text should be clear concise and precise it should be accurate our analysis should not be wrong okay so we have it should be clear concise and precise that is a foremost thing then comes proper flow the proper flow means logical sequencing of thought for presentation so consider the case uh, consider the ramayana so there is a proper sequence for that uh, ramayana story so if the order, imagine if the order is uh, not correct what will happen to the story so the paper writing is just like any uh, story it is a there should be a proper sequencing okay otherwise people uh, will lose interest in that they will not understand anything so proper flow is the, one of the essential most important thing in paper writing then comes simple and correct use of language that is also very important uh, we need not use ornamental language or poetic language we should not do, do that our sentences should be as simple as possible and uh, uh, we have to use correct uh, language use of language is also very much needed we, we should not use past tense use of tense is also important only present tense or present perfect tense is used then comes proper literature review and uh, appropriate citations so proper literature review is also important so in the introduction usually we will give you a detailed literature review and uh, the literature review should be uh, comprehensive and up to date otherwise the reviewer th- people think that you have not given proper uh, study on the topic and they uh, he or she will reject your paper okay then another thing is we have to give proper credit credit to uh, all the researchers who have already done the, uh, uh, work in that area so appropriate citation is also very important then comes proper formats so every journal will have its own formatting they will give templates usually word template or latex template will be given and uh, unless you are well well versed in word don't use word for preparing your manuscripts instead i would recommend to use latex template so that will give you uh, a well good looking manuscripts so for example if you should uh, change one reference and add another reference so it will be a headache in where to rearrange all those uh, citations and all but in latex everything is done automatically so i would recommend everyone to use latex template so these latex templates will, are available in the journal website then uh, we have to check whether we are making any false claims we should not make any false claims exact exaggerated conclusion we should not claim uh, exaggerate we should not exaggerate things the reviewer will catch it easily they are experienced people and they will reject the paper then what is the ideal length of the paper as we uh, uh, as i mentioned in a journal typical length of paper is 8 pages and can go up to 10 pages more than 10 pages is quite unusual okay we should be able to abridge the paper okay it's an 
uh, it's an art, right? It's an art and science. You, have, you should be able to update the paper properly. With the minimum sentence, you should convey maximum idea. That's the uh, point. Then you have to think what to include and what not to include. Okay. So what to include means there is no point in including already known stuff. We are simply wasting the page. Okay. So we have to uh, be wise in choosing what to include and what to, not to include. So uh, after reading so many papers, you will be in a position to decide on what to include and what not to include. Okay. The another thing is avoid salami slicing. Salami slicing means suppose you have an idea, you will split the idea into small small ideas and publish it in different uh, journals or conferences. That is not a good practice. Okay. So if you publish a paper, that should be a solid work published in a good journal or conference. Okay. So we prefer to have quality rather than quantity. That's the main idea. So our paper should have enough quality. Then another thing is regarding the figures. In any paper, the figures are the most uh, important thing. Figures. Because the figures will easily catch attention of uh, the readers and reviewers. Okay. So we have to take special care to prepare figures. So there are uh, professional softwares available like Inkscape or maybe Microsoft VCO, SmartDraw. So a lot of uh, softwares are available. And I usually use Inkscape to prepare my figures. It's a free software and uh, you have full freedom to draw uh, the images in uh, that in that particular software. So I like th that software with it. Then similarly, uh, after figures, it is the equations that is most important. So we, we cannot simply copy and paste equations. We have to typeset the equations properly. That's very important. Otherwise, the resolution of the equations will be gone and the reviewer will think that we have copied from somewhere. Then we have grammatical errors. We have to be careful about the errors. Then factual errors or analysis should be error free. So, so these are the important considerations while writing a paper. Now we'll go through the different sections in in a paper. The first thing is the title of the paper. This is the most important uh, aspect in any paper, the title of the paper. The title of the paper should ideally reflect the work. Okay, it should reflect the work. So if someone goes through the title of the work, they should have some, they should immediately get an idea about what is there in the paper. Okay. So usually a title case is useful in uh, IEEE. We'll see what is meant by title case. Then keywords. There should be four or five keywords. Keyword means, means the index words. That will help the readers to uh, search and uh, locate the correct papers. So the keyword is very important because the search engines will be like Google, will be using, making use of these keywords to locate the paper. So if we are giving correct keywords, our paper, there is a probability that our paper will be cited in some other, some other other's paper papers. So keywords are very important. Then comes abstract. After the title, abstract is the most important paragraph. It is a concise summary about what is done. It is a concise summary about the work. So if someone go, 
uh, read the abstract they should get a clear about idea about uh, what is the work done and uh, how the work is done what are the important features of the work and what is the result what is the inference of the work so this information should be there in a uh, concise manner we, you, we have to put that information in the abstract usually the size of the abstract will be less than 250 words okay 100 to 250 words it can range okay now we'll, i will quickly go through uh, i will show you a simple case paper and we will go through this what is meant by a title case so, so i hope you can view this paper so it's a paper by a paper published in ITP transaction on power electronics in november 2008 you can see a the title is a cascade multi level converter topology with a reduced number of switches okay so we can see that every word start with a capital letter okay that is the title case so in ITP we need to use this title case then you can see that the first letter of this word of that is a lower case symbol of okay so generally speaking uh, a word having more than three letters will start with a capital letter okay that is why this with with start with a capital letter w okay so that is the main big capital case now if you look at this title you can see that a cascade multi level converter topology with the reduced number of switches it would have been better if uh, the author has specified how many le levels were levels are there in that multi level converter see so that will give more information if you can give more information in the title then that is better okay now we can see now we'll show you another paper by me a harmonic suppression uh, scheme uh, for open end winding split phase induction motor i using capacity filters for the full speed speed range it's written by najat myself professor gobugumar and carlos sati so here also you can see four the weight four small small test okay using u is capital letter so it's a title case d small letter it's a title case so going through this title itself we should have some idea about the work then abstract so the abstract should reflect the content of the work right that should also give information about the work because the reviewer will be reading the abstract first the reader will also be reading the abstract abstract is the is very important so if i go through this paper this paper introduces a new multi level inverter topology that has many steps with fewer power electronic switches you please note the tense this paper introduces okay that has many steps the proposed circuit consists of now he is saying about the uh, his work the proposed circuit consists of uh, dash and dash uh, the feature of the work is mentioned the features are mentioned then the operation and performance of the proposed converter has been verified by simulation and experimental result on a single phase multi level converter so what is the result that is also given there okay likewise in the other paper also uh a brief introduction is given then what is the work being done what are the important features of the work that is mentioned then 
the effectiveness of this scheme is demonstrated by comparing the result with those of uh, the effectiveness of the scheme is demonstrated. Explained work is done. So, abstract is a brief summary of the work. Okay. So, the weighed count will be around 200, less than 200 or 250. You can see the index terms. Okay. One, there are four index terms used here. Here you can see five index terms are used here. Okay. Now comes the introduction. So in introduction, the actual paper starts with the introduction, not with the abstract. Okay. So introduction in the introduction. We have to first of all introduce the importance of the area of the work. That may be the first paragraph of the introduction. The importance of the area of the work. Why do you want to do a work in that particular area? Then in the next couple of paragraphs, you can give the literature review done by you. Okay. So when giving the literature review, you have to mention that in a particular paper, uh, such and such work is done, and that work has some such and such limitations also. And whereas in maybe paper, in some other paper, some work is done, but it has some limitations. So we in that way, you have to present the literature review rather than simply giving some work has done has been done in that paper and some other work has been done in the other paper. No, it should not be like that. That pros and cons should be briefly given. Then we have to give the research gap. We have to, so in an introduction, what we are doing is we are marketing our work. Okay. Why someone should read our work? We have to, we are marketing our work. Someone uh, we are projecting that because of the uh, research gap, there is some work to be done in that particular area. We are taking up, the, up this work, project work. Okay. In that way, it should come. We have to present such a way that our work is very important as far as the particular area is concerned. So, in that way, you have to develop the introduction. And in the final paragraph, probably our problem can be defined. So it may be a, uh, it may have uh, the same meaning as that of the abstract. The same content may be given there also, meaning you should not copy and paste the same thing, but the same idea should be conveyed in the last paragraph. So that is a content of, uh, that is about the introduction. Okay, then comes the actual content. The actual content contains the proposed scheme. Suppose you are proposing a new topology, you can, there should be a clear diagram and based on that you can explain that uh, topology. Then you can explain that uh, topology, then you can analyze, uh, ana you can make an analysis as a subsection or next section you can analyze, uh, you can make an analysis. Then uh, there can be different subsections the analysis is too long. Uh, you can uh, have different subsections. Then uh, the result can be given. Simulation result can be given in one section. Then hardware result can be given in another section. Likewise, there there will be different subsections in the content. Okay. Then finally, there will be conclusion. The conclusion is also a summary of the work, projecting the uh, features of the work. So we'll, uh, then there can be acknowledgements, that is optional. Suppose the project is uh, out of some project uh, project funding scheme, maybe DST, you have, you have to mention that acknowledgements. Or if someone has helped you with the project work, we can mention their name in that acknowledgement. 
so that is optional then comes the reference that is also very important we should have a uh, good number of correct references we should not give random references the references given should have relevance to the our particular paper our paper otherwise it is odd then appendices can be given that is also optional suppose you uh, you you have you have derived a suppose you you, you have you are proposing a new method and some deriv derivation is very important for the proper understanding of the uh, text then you can give the derivation as an appendix that is optional then comes the author author biography that comes in journals in conferences usually author biography is not not given okay now again we will go through that papers can see the introduction the concept of multi level inverters was introduced like that so that is a area okay the area is being defined then the literature review next paragraph the topology was uh, series h which design you not please not the numbering the one in a square bracket right it means that reference number this numbering system is called vancouver numbering system there are two numbering systems one is vancouver and the other one is uh, harvard in harvard the author uh, and the year of publication we given but i triply follows this vancouver vancouver standard or this uh, numeric standard okay and uh, the numbering in the reference uh, in the reference list the references will appear in the same order as the reference is cited in the paper okay so this is the literature review is giving the literature review uh, see since this topology consists of series power conversion cells the voltage and power levels may be scaled easily that is one advantage but an apparent disadvantage of this topology is the large number of isolated voltages required to supply itself see he is mentioning a disadvantage also for the papers 3 and 4 okay in that way we have to mention the uh, we have to cite the papers the literature review should be done in this manner okay so why why we are coming up with a new proposal we have to justify that that's the point and the reader should uh, should be convinced that we have done an extensive literature review uh, starting from the initial works in that area uh, right to the uh, to maybe 2020 recent recent reference should also be there so our literature review should be comprehensive and it, it should be relevant also only relevant papers should be cited so we should not cite unnecessary uh, 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 no we should not cite uh, papers that are not very relevant okay then you can see the final paragraph this paper suggests a new topology for multi level converters with a large number of steps so that is a feature of the Uh, paper he is presenting the feature of his uh, proposed method in addition for producing all levels at the output voltage a procedure for calculating the required is finally the paper includes a design example of a multi level converter so in this paragraph the features of the work are projected okay so in this way we have to write the introduction okay now comes the main body as we mentioned there will be uh, figures and these figures should be figures are very important as we already mentioned the figures should be clear even if you zoom to maybe 300 percentage or 600 percentage should be clear the diagram should be very clear and accurate too 
Okay. So you can see these clear figures are given here. And uh, the explanation of the main topology is presented here. Then, then uh, you can see the equations. The equations are very clear with a high resolu uh, good resolution. So, we should not copy and paste these equations. The resolution should be good. That is, if you are typesetting in maybe math type or equation editor, you will get very good equations. Okay. Then the analysis is given in different sections. Then something you can see there is some problem with this image. So some resolution is lacking here. This is because in, while doing simulation, this is simulation result. They have taken very small step size, uh, sorry, very large, maybe large step size. Therefore, the, the resolution is good. Otherwise, it is okay. Then he has divided the analysis into different subsections. Then he made some comparison with the, some other uh, paper. So the results are given. So the comparison is also very important in some situation. That is, we are, we are proving that our the topology is uh, better in certain respect compared to other papers. Then the table, can go through the table. See, usually in IEEE format, the figures and table should appear either on top or on the bottom of the page, not in between. The should, text should not uh, come in between these figures. Here also you can see, it's so top or bottom. <laughs> appear only on top or bottom. Okay. Then simulation and experimental results are given. So you can see this uh, fonts, font size and uh, type. These are all decided by the template of that particular journal. Then the simulation result is given. Usually, uh, okay. If we are using MATLAB, we can get a little more better simulation output result rather than this box and all. Then experimental output current is given. I think he has given uh, because it's an old paper. Probably they have. Uh, taken a photograph of that uh, uh, image appearing on the DSO and put it here. Nowadays, we can save the waveform and uh, take the result. Okay. And uh, here you can see, we have to mention the axis also. Here, we can have some idea regarding the axis. It is 5 millisecond per division, but it is better if we can give the axis explicitly, explicitly here. Then, conclusion comes, what is being done? Uh, see, a new basic unit for a multi-level converter has been presented. So, please note the tense here, tense use here. 
okay it is not past tense even though the work has been done already done we are uh, the tense will be is present the perfect tense okay so we never use this past tense okay now comes the reference the reference should also be in proper format so it varies uh, with the journal but usually i typically follows the same uh, reference format so general uh, uh, students usually make mistakes in this putting this references you can see here i typically trans dot ind dot apll dot that is a uh, wording given in usually that is the wording that is the wording to be given in this references not like in this typically transactions on industry obligations now you have to follow the proper format then this other biography and photograph can be given so this is about a, a typical paper now we will go through uh some common mistakes made by students okay a few common mistakes in paper formatting by novice authors so experienced authors i may not make these mistakes but novice authors usually make such mistakes the main mistake is the key idea is not properly conveyed so see this can happen so even after reading the entire manuscript the key idea is not clear so we have to project the main idea so students often forget that then poor drawing out drawing the students drawing may not be legible then they may be directly copying circuits from matlab you should not do that so we may be doing simulation in matlab maybe in matlab simulation only the circuit diagram is there but that is not a standard circuit diagram so we have to make use of standard drawing softwares like inkscape and we have to draw the circuit with the standard symbols okay not we should not directly copy circuit from matlab simulation that's a mistake made by students especially ug students and pg students make this mistake then different symbols in different circuits okay so a uh, in, in a paper i saw in one circuit uh, they always use the mosfet as the symbol for, for switches whereas in another circuit diagram they use the igbt as the circuit symbol that should not be the case so the same circuit symbol symbols should be used in all the circuits okay then alignment issues in drawings like uh, uh, for example you can give switch names as s1 s2 s3 s4 like that okay if s1 and uh, s2 are uh, lying in a horizontal plane you can align this uh, writing s1 and s2 also align align it horizontally okay so the drawing tools like inkscape or visio has that alignment features inbuilt there you have to make use of that then only we should will have a good looking circuit diagram then students usually copy paste equations that, that we have already discussed when we copy paste the resolution will be gone that's the main problem same thing with the images also when we copy and paste it then resolution will be gone rather than that usually uh, uh, so for example if you are using inkscape and if suppose we have to <coughs> uh, use the symbols mathematical symbols there there are methods by which this math type equations can be uh, converted to latex and exported to inkscape so the same equations can appear there 
like we is in visio you can directly use that math in math tape can be directly used there or in equation editor can be directly used there then you will get good quality in uh, equations in your uh, drawings in okay then font size and type top font type and size that is also important the student may be using times new roman font for the text but in the uh, diagram maybe in that in the result the simulation result they may be using heavily as a uh, access font that is not correct we have to use the same font everywhere and the size should also be proper as uh, given by the template of the journal of conference then another mistake usually done is incorrect figure reference so in the text in the matter we have to we will refer to some figure right that figure should be correct that reference should be correct we should not point to the wrong figure that is awkward likewise the correct reference to figures tables and equations should be given then there can be citation issues that is in the text we will be uh, citing the wrong reference okay in, uh, in the text we may be referring we may point in to uh, reference number 10 but whereas in the reference list the paper may be a different one so that issue should not be there okay that is the improper reference uh, then the improper reference format that we have already seen the format of the reference may not be correct then another mistake is too small resolution or too high resolution of images so what should be the ideal resolution of image that is also important so if we are using an image is having too small resolution then the image will be blurred the edges will be blurred right image resolution is poor but if you are using a too high resolution image the problem is the size of our paper will go okay in conferences and all usually the upper limit may be 2 mb 2 mb size so our single image may have 500 or 600 or more than that kilobyte of memory requirement that should not be the case so the resolution should be optimum i typically specifies an optimum resolution of 300 dp dp means dots per inch 300 dot per inch so in this drawing tools we have options to specify the resolution whether it is 300 dp or uh, uh, 150 dp we can give the resolution usually uh, we have we have to give it as 300 dp then the size of the overall paper will be less than maybe 2 megabit so the loading of pep, uh, papers will be faster too then then another issue is missing important results for example Suppose it is a motor drive, a student is uh, preparing a paper on uh, maybe induction motor drive. One important, very important result is the current, current waveform. Because the current decides the torque and the torque decides the speed. Right? But in that paper, that current waveform will be missing. So all other results will be there. The speed will be there, the torque ripple will be there, but current will be missing. So the important results should not be missed out. Okay. So now this is, if possible, use uh, vector graphics rather than raster graphics. So what is the difference between vector graphic and uh, raster graphic? So there, a difference is given here. 
if we are we have used the vector graphics then even if we zoom it then the image will be clear because the vector graphic is graphics is defined using certain equations so even if you zoom it up the resolution will not be gone because it is defined by certain equations whereas in raster graphics like jpeg png and all if you zoom it the resolution will be gone so where are possible use vector graphics inkscape visio and all are based on this uh, vector graphics pdf is also a vector graphic okay now we will see what reviewers generally look for in a typical uh, paper okay so the most important thing is novelty or originality of the paper whether you have contributed something to the research community that is the most important thing especially for a journal paper unless us is a review paper novelty is a must review paper means you will have a large number of papers you will go through those papers and you will write a detailed literature review on each paper and compare different papers and all that is meant by review paper if your paper is not coming into the category of review paper then novelty is a must for journal papers then another thing is the contribution to the field okay your paper should contribute to the particular that particular area that purview of the journal your paper should come within the scope of the journal and uh, your paper should contribute something to the uh, research area that is very important then the reviewers will look whether you have made sufficient analysis whether there is sufficient uh, explanatory evidence is evidence is there okay so the paper should be supported by analysis okay and uh, should be supported with the simulation and uh, experimental result especially in power electronics i am dealing with usually dealing with power electronics papers that's why i i frequently discuss power electronics papers so it should be supported with analysis and experimental evidence okay then quality of presentation and readability including the effective use of illustrations whether you have presented the paper in a proper manner whether the paper is easily understandable by the readers what is the clarity of the text written text what is the clarity of the images so the reviewers will go through those aspects okay so we have to be very careful to prepare our manuscript with due care and there are for a typical conference paper the same thing applies but the rules are less stringent so it is very difficult to get papers published in a transaction compared to that of a conference okay so this quote is very relevant scott is by sir henry royce was the founder of rolls royce motors in i think it is in 1864 or something like that that is small things make perfection but perfection is no small thing so popular quote that is perfection is decided by the, the detailed presentation is decided by the details so we have to be very careful in the fine de- finer details then only we will have a good paper okay we have already discussed the paper if you uh, wish i will show you how we can search i triple explore and find suitable journals hello so i triple explore is the search engine of i triple 
you click that, there are options, regular search and advanced search. Here you can uh, give the topic, maybe say active filters or something like that. So you can search, uh, if you want to have journals only, you can check this journals page and apply it. Likewise, you can go through that, okay. So I'm going, not going through that. Hello? Hello, is there any issue with the audio? Hello? Looks like there is some issue with the audio. No, sir, you are audible. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine. Okay, I'm not going through that because we are running short of time. So in this way, you can search and you can, uh, if you have a IEEE uh, login, you can login and then you can download the papers. See, I have a um, membership in IEEE Power Electronics Society, IEEE Industry Applicator Society, and IEEE Industry Electronics Society. So I will be able to download papers of the societies. That is why that green means that I am able to download those papers. Then I can go through those papers. Okay. Okay, so we have already gone through those two papers, therefore I am not going through this paper again. The po but the point is, here you can see, you can search based on the most cited papers, you can search based on the number of citations. Uh, this, you can see, this paper, particular paper is cited by 2,171 others. Usually, it may be a review paper. Usually, the review papers will get more citations. Uh, okay. You can search on the basis of uh, patents, if you wish. You can search based on most popularity, most downloaded papers. Like that, you can search. Okay. So, If more number of, if, your, if the paper is cited by more uh, patents, it means the paper has merit. Some, it, is, it may be an, a very innovative paper. Okay. Like that, you can search and find out papers from the IEEE. Uh, it's look like there is uh, some audio issue. Somebody, uh, I request everybody to unmute their mic. There is a lot of disturbance, audio disturbance. Okay, okay, now it is fine. It's okay. Okay, now we'll quickly go through publication ethics. We will discuss what is meant by plagiarism and self-plagiarism. Okay, so plagiarism means in Latin, this plagiarism, this word came from Latin, means the kidnapping. Okay, so plagiarism as defined by Collins Dictionary, plagiarism is the practice of using or copying someone else's idea or work and pretending, pretending that you thought of it or created it. Whereas I typically defines plagiarism as the use of someone else's prior ideas, processes, results, or words without explicitly acknowledging the original author and its source. 
So the plagiarism essentially means stealing someone else's work or someone else's ideas, work, result or even words. So we should not copy anything in this regard. Okay, that is very important. So IEEE in fact defines five levels of plagiarism. You can go through the IEEE website and see what are all the levels of plagiarism. It is taken very seriously. IEEE takes plagiarism very seriously. Okay, we have to be very, very careful about that. So there are certain tools to help us with the, the plagiarism, like Identicate, Turnitin, and IEEE Crosscheck. These are a few tools that will help us with the plagiarism. So uh, we have to use the tool such that we there can be some uh, plagiarism unknowingly. So you be we read so many papers and it is possible that some of the some of our sentences may come from other papers unknowingly okay so in order to avoid that we can use this tool okay if someone writes their own sentences then he or she need not be worried about uh, the plagiarism but still there can be some uh, sort of plagiarism that is due, uh, coming unknowingly. To help that, we can uh, use this type of software tools, identicate, internet, and etc. But people sometimes use these tools so that uh, they uh, restructure the sentences and all, and they uh, use the tool in a different way. So it's just like manipulation. So we cannot use the tool for that purpose. Some some people do that way. They steal some work and manipulate that text and publish it as their own. That's a uh, unethical practice. Then another thing is simultaneous submission. That is also unethical. Simultaneous submission means. Uh, We are preparing a paper and uh, submitting in that paper to many uh, publications, many journals or conferences. That is meant by simultaneous publications. Then another unethical practice is duplicate publication. Duplicate publication means we have already published our paper, but we are publishing that we are submitting that paper with the minor modification to some other publication next year. So that is an ticket. It's called a duplicate publication. Then using figures or text from other papers. That is the direct plagiarism. If we want to use figures, for example, we want, if we want to use a figure from a paper, then we have to get the permission of the author. Then only we can use that. Then we have to Acknowledge the paper. We have to cite that paper. Okay. Now, if you have, if the paper is from a different publisher, maybe Springer, we may have to get consent from that publisher also. So we cannot simply take figures from a, figures or text from other places and simply paste it in our paper. No, it's not. It's unethical. Highly unethical. Then another unethical practice is self-citation. Self-citation means, suppose we, we have already published a paper, then we will cite that paper in some in our future, maybe suppose we are writing another paper, and we are citing our old paper there, but our old paper may not have any relevance in the context of the new paper. That paper may be entirely different. We need not quote that old paper in that new paper there is no relevance still we are referring uh, still we are citing that paper there that is called a self citation that is also unethical some people do do that uh, in order to increase their citation index and all. that's an unethical practice 
then another another unethical practice is non contributing audits it means suppose a four btech students do a particular project and they come up with an idea and uh, prepare a paper then uh, they have completed the paper they have right and everything then while before submitting uh, one of their friends request them please put my name also in your paper so that is highly, that is also unethical because the new friend has not contributed to the paper okay so that is unethical so i typically treat this uh, type of unethical practice very seriously and uh, if i typically get say complaint in this regard, in such regard they will usually put this or this in prohibited or this list that means i typically will blacklist the others that is a problem they they others will not be able to publish any paper for 3 or 4 or 5 years maybe 3 year or 5 year 5 year depending on the severity of uh, the plagiarism then sometimes i typically will uh ask this others to retract the papers or they actually will remove the papers from the actually explore then in some cases the original author can take legal action against the person who simply copied and pasted their work okay so the plagiarism is a serious offense and uh, i remember a case when I last year a student a pg student of a different institute prepared a paper and uh, he convinced this gate that this is his idea and uh, he presented the paper in a conference in a conference or journal i don't remember and uh, after several months the original author complained regarding the issue to ieee now investigation is going on and uh, because of the unethical practice of the student they his professor is also uh, under severe stress now because his name also comes in the prohibited other list so it's very we have, we have to be very careful to avoid such practice now next thing is identifying suitable place for publication of paper so we have come prepared our manuscript now where to publish our paper first thing is the conference which conference to publish our paper how to identify a good conference that's a question that's a question so one uh, clue is the conference should be peer reviewed and professionally organized okay so you should not every see i usually get uh, emails some anonymous email saying that you are submit your paper paper and it will get published in one week okay so if you go to their website no information will be there who is the organizer no information will be given where it is organized nothing will be there whether it is reviewed or not no information so if you submit your paper there it is possible that your paper will be published in with some other other names so your paper may get stolen then another important thing is the conference proceedings should be indexed in some publication house like ieee elsevier springer trailer fancies why highly interscience there are a lot of publishing houses you have to make sure that the proceedings will appear in some publication houses otherwise what will happen suppose a student is publishing a paper in a conference organized from a, a local institute the paper may be available in their conference proceedings only so if you want to refer your paper and after so many years the paper may not be available okay you may cite that paper in your resume and if you 
if you show it to your prospective employer they may search for that paper and it, they may not be able to find locate that so that is a problem that is the process you have to see whether the conference proceedings will be indexed in uh, popular publishing houses that's very important then look for major ipp conferences like ipp icon is a major conference and ipp pedas ipp ecc these are all major conferences so major conference means if you go to the title of the conference for example to the pedas conference it will be written 2020 ipp international conference on power electronics rice uh, air and energy systems like that that is 2020 ipp that wording will be there whereas if a conference is only te- technically sponsored that is ipp is not involved in a major way that's but their technical sponsorship is there then the title may be like in this manner 2020 conference international conference on that ipp will not be there okay that's the difference between this conferences right all these ipp conferences will be indexed in uh, web of science and ipp ipp has its own index we will discuss about uh, indexing in size and uh, if you are publishing your paper in ipp conference you need not worry now which journal to publish your paper that's the next question so there are major journal publishing houses like ipp iit elsewhere spencer taylor francis okay then we will again come to that po- this point later then the question is whether what is meant by open access journals open access journal means uh, anybody can download the uh, papers published in open access journals but the problem is they always have to pay some amount for publication okay so open access journal in, uh, means uh, they it does not mean that the papers are of low quality you know sometimes ipp also allows open access journals now a lot of open access ipp access is an open access ipp journal uh but only thing is the author has to pay some amount to that journal and uh, the conventional journals are all based on non open access journals like ipp transactional industrial electronics basically they are all uh, non open access journals they are not open access journals okay but uh, the problem with open access journals we have to pay a lot of money maybe uh, 2000 dollars you have to pay so it is not affordable to many of us and uh, the many of our universities do not support this open access channels also they will not consider this open access channels then there are predatory channels also which are to be avoided lot of predatory channels will be there they will offer you a public publish uh, publication within maybe 3 uh, days or 5 days if you pay some money so they they will demand some money and uh, you should not publish in those papers so it, it will affect the credibility your credibility also so after so many years you will be look at your you search your name in google and you will say see your names in some predatory journals that is quite awkward right so this predatory journals are to be avoided then we have to then impact factor sca index such factors are there we will discuss that also quickly in the next slide that is an indication of uh, uh, the journal uh, it is an indicative measure of uh, it's a compare it gives some comparison among different journals okay. like uh, in web of science the book science is a is an indexing site there you can see science citation index social science citation index what is the difference between these citation indexes previously this uh, 
only sign only sign citation index was there and uh, the germans like attribute transaction on industrial electronics power electronics and all come in sci index journals sci index now it has become sci expanded more and more journals have been incorporated in that sci now it is sci index journals and uh, many universities uh, demand that the paper research paper should be published in one of the sci index journals so that the research phd can be awarded so in our kerala technological university they demand this sci index journals okay then there can be some citation like emerging source citation index yes see emerging source means new journals are included in this emerging source citation index so after maybe 3 or 4 years only they will qualify to come into the sci index provided they are maintain their quality okay and uh, this there is a term called impact factor of journals so that is impact factor of journals was revised uh, in 1975 by eugen garfield and the impact factor of a journal uh, means how many citations are there for the paper of a journal for example if you want to uh, find out the impact factor of a journal in 2019 you have to take the whole citation citations means the reference made by some author in their paper about your paper that is citation so if we want to find out the impact factor of a journal in the 2019 we have to take the entire citation of all the papers published by the journal in 2019 then that number is divided by the total number of publications in 2018 and total number of publication in 2017 this gives two year impact factor of that particular journal okay and uh, uh, generally this impact factor has been considered as a quality index of a journal now we have several such impact some such factors but still this impact factor is a main is a major major thing okay now and this is the search page of web of science journal list you have to check whether a journal is available in that web of science or not then if you want to show, if you are not sure uh, to which journal you want to publish your paper you can simply uh, give the title of the paper and uh, abstract to this manuscript matcher in this web of science then this web of science will give a list of suitable journals where your paper can be published then but you have to make some uh, wise decision where to publish your paper okay likewise there is scopus scopus will have its own uh, uh, quality factors like uh, site score okay based on that they do their uh, demarcation of different journals like similarly there is another recent one called saimago journal and country rank so in the other two cases the all the journals are classified on the same basis for example if a journal is in biology it is possible that that, that journal will have more back factor compared to a journal in maybe in oral points because more people will be reading the biological kind of thing so then we will think that that biology journal is more uh, is of more quality than the polytrans journal that may not be the case we have to compare uh, uh, journals in certain uh, area only then only we can compare right that, that type of comparison will be done in this sca mago journal comparison they will classify different uh, areas for example electric and electronics engineering uh, then they will classify the journal 
based on the citations they are also the citation is used then they will classify the journals in two four four types q1 q2 q3 and q4 for example if there are 100 journals in the area of electrical engineering if a journal the top 25 journals will be classified in as q1 like that so you will get some using this uh, 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 using this you will get some idea regarding the quality of the journal then you can decide where to publish the paper so these two are our ias society magazine and journal ias industrial applications magazine and data to industry transactional industry applications then next thing is submission of papers to journals if you want to suppose we have uh, a paper or we have an idea then we develop a paper based on that idea then we have to weigh the paper that is where to publish the paper whether the paper can whether whether the paper can be published in ITP transactional industrial electronics or whether the paper can be published in uh, maybe iit power electronics or whether the paper can be published only in conferences so we have to weigh the paper so for that we need uh, the students may not be in a position to weigh the paper because we, they do not have that much experience so the guide will have to help the students to weigh the paper where to publish the paper if our paper is uh, suppose the paper is uh, does not have enough uh, in a way enough novelty and we are submitting it to maybe it to transactional industrial electronics then right away the paper may get written. so then we have to weigh the paper and you have to find out the proper journal to which we want to submit the paper suppose we have a, a novel idea and we have the simulation result and experimental result and we have prepared the paper usually conferences uh, simulation result is sufficient if you have experimental result then well and fine but journals usually require both simulation result and experimental result suppose you have prepared a paper and paper you have presented simulation as well as experimental result then the next step is to submit the paper to the journal in it play we have we will call it manuscript sender we have to take an uh, look in account there in manuscript sender then we can submit the paper there then we have to specify the corresponding author and the first author what is the difference between first author and the corresponding author in a paper uh, the first name has almost the or first author name has almost 70 percent the credit if you mark credit in that manner means the first author will have the most credit a lion's share of the credit will be given to the first author okay suppose you are a research scholar the first author should be you you should be the first author then only you will get the credit so if you are the second author or third author you will not have the credit you will not have the uh, that you will not have much credit so that is a issue then credit corresponding author means you will be uh, uh, the letter you will be correspondence will be made among the first author and the, sorry corresponding author and the uh, manuscript sender the associate editor so the first author can himself be the corresponding author No, need not need not be the case anybody can be, any other can be the corresponding author and while submitting you have to prepare a covering letter to the uh, editor in chief also you have to mention that you have you have prepared a uh, paper based on your own uh, um, novel novel ideas uh, in a very polite manner and uh, you should mention that you would like to receive uh, review for the paper and uh, you should the paper uh, you you can request the paper to be considered for publication in 
the in the journal that way you can write a cover letter to the editor in chief then the editor in chief will give it to associate editor and associate editor will give it to the reviewers okay and uh, some days it can happen that the paper is desk rejected by the associate editor desk rejection means the paper will be paper will be rejected without any review the paper will be rejected without any review because the paper may be out of scope of the journal or the paper has very limited knowledge maybe a state forward combination of theories and algorithm that are well established that is already known material you, the author is again giving to in the paper so it will get it may get rejected immediately without any review then it may be repeated or uh, may their paper may contain no experimental evidence may get rejected like that then the paper may be rejected because in some because of insufficient bibliography that is the reference may not be adequate the paper is poorly written there is a lot of grammatical errors illegible uh, figures then desk rejection may have take place and uh, we are coming to the final portion that is dealing with uh, reviewer comments and uh, rejection of paper okay so the ae will give the paper to the paper to the reviewer and most of the reviewers are critical reviewers they will critically evaluate the, your paper and uh, they will comment accordingly okay some of the reviewers will blind they will immediately may reject the, uh, your paper without giving any reason so such thing can happen some reviewers will ask for revision there are major revision there can be minor revision minor revision means more grammatical errors or minor corrections only will be there major revision means you have to revise the manuscript in a major manner major way you will get almost one month to revise the paper then the revised paper can be sent to the uh, eac again okay then it will be again reviewed then again one more set major revision may take place and uh, your paper may get, get accepted after that okay so if it get get accepted then that is well and fine sometimes it can happen that even after two revisions the paper may get rejected that can also ha happen so we cannot predict anything okay. then even if the paper gets rejected the important thing is we will be getting lot of review comments that is a major the point we can improve our paper based on the review comments that is a major thing so that is the major attraction of sending papers to major journals and major conferences we will get a good review comments to improve our paper so even if there is a rejection you we should not we need not lose heart we can try again we can incorporate the corrections and we can again some we can submit it to uh, and, uh, the same journal or to some other journal okay so wish you all good luck i hope this uh, presentation is useful to you so thank you and uh, if you have any comments you can if you have any queries you can ask hello yes sir you are audible so it's a it was a great session by you and it was a really informative session thank you for connecting with us and uh, with that i would like to call sneha thank you so much sir gratitude is the greatest of virtues which we can offer to you at this auspicious moment it was a honor to hear words of encouragement and excellence from you now i would like to call ieee ias and joint centers council faculty coordinator ravi sharma to share share his experience with us sir please thank you sneha greetings to all i am honored and humbled that i got this opportunity to share my research experience on this platform 
thank you, Professor Jason, for enlightening us with your vast knowledge on how to write a research paper. We appreciate having this mystery area clarified. I will not take much time. I would like to highlight three major points, especially with UG students that I have observed as a researcher. Firstly, many of the students that work on a project does the work just for the sake of their degree. They don't know the value that a research paper on the same project in a good journal would lead to a lot of benefit in their career. Many students also go in various hackathons with good projects and they win as well. But they don't know the fact that publishing a research paper would boost up their CV. The students are doing a commandable project work, but they don't write a research paper. However, some of the students are putting efforts in writing research papers, but because of the lack of knowledge, they fail to write an impressive paper and they are not able to publish their work. And the second thing, most of the students don't know the merit of research paper in overseas education, like pursuing MS from Canada, US, Germany, or many other countries. And the third point is uh, some of the students have a lot of misconception regarding research work, like uh, beginning with the writing abstract and conclusion first, many things, many things that since they don't possess a good writing skill, they cannot proceed in research area, even though they had a decent technical knowledge. I'm sure after watching this seminar, the students will be able to enhance their research paper writing skills. Uh, I would like to ensure the student that we, the faculty of MIT, Delhi are always ready to help and clear your doubts. I'm grateful to the Maharaja Garfin Institute of Technology for giving us this platform that enables us to the enhance our research work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Over to you, Sneha. Thank you, sir, for sharing your views with us. Now, if any participant has any query, they can put their query in the feedback form. And now I would like to call Dr. Rajvi Mittal, HOD Triple Department, named to present the vote of thanks to sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sanaya. I am audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening to all. Respected Professor Jensen Methu, our most valued speaker, HOD, follows teachers, and all participants and my dear students. It is my privilege to present vote of thanks on behalf of Maharaja Garsan Institute of Technology. I heartily congratulate the IEEE IES MADE team to organize this webinar, Art of Writing Research Paper, which is very important topic for the students and researchers. And special thanks to Professor Matthew who spared his valuable time to share his wisdom words among us. Professor Matthew, every point of your speech was knowledgeable and I'm sure all participants had a remarkable experience of it. Further, I extend my thanks to our institute management, especially our founder, chairman and advisor, Dr. Nand Kishore Garagji, for inspiring us to arrange such event. I'm also thankful to our director, Professor Neelan Sharma, and Dean Professor S.S. Deswal for their support. Last but not the least, heartily thanks to all the attendees who attend and support this event. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good evening. Over to Sneha. So with that, I would like to end the session on a high note by having a selfie session. Also, I request everyone to say Hail IEEE IAS with me. Hail IEEE IAS. That's yeah, all for my side. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yes, sir. Thank you, everybody. It, 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 it was a great pressure to uh, have a webinar uh, today, this evening. So I am really happy that uh, uh, we have a very active IEEE student branch in your institute. So thank you all. Thank you very much.